Have you ever dealt with racism or bullying? Often I do get called the, the, the C word for Asian people. Hey, are you, what kind of Asian are you? Like, oh, I'm Filipino. Like, oh, that's not Asian. Mm -hmm. I was kind of picked on. Everyone thought I was the nerd or that I was always good at math and that they could cheat off of me, um, which is actually not the case. I'm horrible at math. I had a you know, burning you know, hate for, for him. And I would say I, I still do. I don't want anyone to feel like that, so. In general, I think that's, that's helped me a lot as a person to just be compassionate towards just people in general. Hi there, this is Isabel Du with ABCs of Attraction. We've been doing a lot of fun topics here, but today we want to tackle something more serious, and that's something that affects Asian Americans, bullying. According to the U.S. Justice and Education Department, 54% of Asian Americans have experienced classroom bullying, making them the most bullied ethnicity out of any other racial group. We want to find out today what some of your experiences have been like with bullying and racism. Have you ever dealt with racism or bullying? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, no, really. no, not really. Yes. Uh, no, not really. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I was. I had. I did deal, deal with both. Going to mainly elementary, and middle school. My bully had a. Uh, he had always. Uh, just kind of shoved me around, uh, you know, at times during like recess, uh, just because I went to like, take their eighth school. And during recess, I think uh, even one time he just uh, chucked the football at me um, for no particular reason. So, and there are times where he, he said some things, but I, I think I remember more of the stuff of what he's uh, done. I moved around a lot when I was a kid, and um, so being the new kid was already difficult as it is. Right. Like being the only Asian at your, uh, at your school, and you know, I was also a pretty chubby kid too, and I was pretty different from everyone else, so a lot of people just, it was easy, pretty easy to single me out, and people tended to bully me, you know. Um, it got physical because oh, of, wow. um, you know, I guess uh, stemming back from like growing up and like the culture where I'm from and like how you're supposed to act a, as an individual and how to um, stand up for yourself, that's how I was taught. As a little kid, um, I actually used to grow up in Arkansas. Oh so, wow. Yeah, so uh, living there I was made fun for being Asian or more specifically Filipino. Um, I remember going to school like on the bus because they asked me like, hey are you, what kind of Asian are you? Like, oh I'm Filipino. Like, oh that's not Asian. And so I remember like just having that like time for time as a little kid. I had to deal with people calling me like you know, like stereotypical um, Asian names, because uh, just, um, I guess, the lack of knowledge of like who I was or uh, where I was like, originally from. Often I do get called the, the, the C word for Asian people. You know, like Chino or like Chink or like other like, you know, like racist, like derogatory terms towards me. And like, you know, uh, I'm Filipino, uh, Filipino American. And like, um, just hearing that uh, being like, just grouped up together and like not being able to like identify like with myself really like confused me. They always think that we have accents for some reason and when I didn't they would say oh you speak um, English so well and I'm like well I'm American and they're like are you really like where's your family from and I was like my family grew up in America my whole life. Back in my childhood I think I kind of suppressed like my identity being Asian mm -hmm. but being I used to like kind of embrace it more so. Growing up and it was really um, difficult for me to I guess find my identity. I've always uh, internalized things, which isn't very good. And so inside, I uh, I had a you know, burning you know hate for for him, and I would say I, I still do. Huh. Um, although I, I don't see him, you know, I could care less about him. Yeah. It's it's uh, something that I still need to find a way to let go. I did have an identity crisis for a while. Um, I tried to whiten myself, so like not like skin-wise, but I would, um, as you can tell, I very I guess American-sounding. Um, I tried to ignore my cultural background. My parents were like, "Oh, we really want you to learn this language, or we really want you to learn our culture," and I was very um, resistant to doing that. I wanted to be very Americanized, and I uh, didn't want that stigma attached to me. And in regards to being um, gay, I really tried to act overly masculine. Um, didn't really work um, but that actually helped me come out of the closet. I'm lucky luckily like the school had a lot of great teachers and they all intervened as well and so I'm pretty proud of the school system for that. 
but I did uh, mention to the vice principal that uh, he used to be my bully, and so I did have someone to at least someone safeguard me. Nice. Did that make you feel better? It did. But we're not that strong enough, or we're not big enough, so people just bully us, or not me, not really, not me, maybe to them. And then another reason might be they're too good at academic. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I see. I had to push myself to be brave enough to talk to my friends um, and they gave me all the support I needed as well as they made me feel comfortable with being um, Asian American and being different in such a non-diverse area growing up. I've, I've always been told like you know defend yourself always like stick up for yourself and that, that led physical but then um, again it, I, I, I guess I grew from that experience and learned that you know that's not the only case that's not the only way you're supposed to react to a situation like that. If you knew somebody who was experiencing what you had experienced, what would be your advice to them? Uh, keep your chin up. Don't. I mean, obviously, it's just one. It's just one small group's opinions are towards you against everyone else's, you know. And and if it gets worse, then go to help. There's pretty good help out there. They they have to look for help first. First of all, they have to look for help, and then have to be brave to face the, those those who bully them. And then, or else, they, the, the, those people would just continue to do that. Just stand up for yourself. Um, don't let the bully put you down. It was hurtful to me, and I can't imagine what anyone else would feel like. And I don't want that. I don't want anyone to feel like that. So, in general, I think that's that's helped me a lot as a person to just be compassionate towards just people in general. It doesn't matter who they are, where they came from, what their background is. People are people. Talk to your family, even your closest friends. Um, I know I just didn't necessarily talk to my parents about my racial identity until I grew older and kind of better understood who I was as a person. Um, so I say, like, if you're young and you kind of struggle with your identity, then you should definitely talk to people about it because knowledge is power. I love that. If you could tell that bully anything, what would you say or do? You got to know this is long-term damage you're dealing with too. So. Stop it. <laughs> I yeah. Guess. yeah, it's pretty easy, but uh, yeah. If I could talk to my bullies today, I would partially say thank you because they made me brave enough and they definitely challenged me um, to come to terms with who I was instead of hide it. Um, but I would also say that um, I hope that they have changed the way that they view people and they view diversity um, to be more accepting because they're going to meet people that are different from them for the rest of their lives. And if they can't come to terms with being accepting, they're going to struggle themselves um, with living in society, just seeing how progressive America is today. Um, it's hard kind of to be a prejudiced person, um, which is a good thing. Awesome. Thank you so much no for your problem. time. I really appreciate your story. Thanks. No You're problem. Right. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. According to a study by the San Francisco State University that followed 199 Asian Americans, 99% of them experienced racism on a daily basis. When the Asian men confronted or otherwise took a proactive stance against the racist behavior, they felt a decrease in their emotional pain and an increase in their self-esteem. It's coming up with a plan to respond to racism that fosters a you-can-do-it attitude and a sense of empowerment um, that creates this buffer against the stress and feeling of victimhood while increasing your confidence. So remember my Asian brothers, you do not have to feel victim against racist bullies. Um, if there's one thing I've learned from the ABC's attraction is that you are strong, powerful, and confident because you're Asian and not in spite of it. Have you dated white girls? I dated them briefly, didn't really like it. I've never dated Asian actually. It was kind of hard in the beginning and uh, I, I just feel, I don't know what to say. I've been with white girls. Huh. Why is it that other Asian men have a harder time dating outside of their race? I don't know, but it sucks for them. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, this is Isabel Du with ABCs of Attraction. We've been 